Welcome, friends. This is part two of the topic culture as an excuse for unprocessed trauma or grief. If you haven't listened to part one, go back. This is totally a continuation. If you're scratching your head and you're telling yourself, I can't understand this Filipino culture. If you are hating on the culture and thinking, oh my gosh, this culture can be quite toxic. It's probably that the Filipino culture in your household, in your immediate space, was used or is used rather than as an explanation. It is used as an excuse for something painful to look at, for repress emotion, feelings that have been pushed down for one's survival or for the lack of a role model. So today, we're going to continue to explore this. A quick shout out to Banana the Cat 29 for this review. And it goes like this. This podcast is fantastic. As an American who married a Filipino-American about a year ago, this podcast has helped me to better understand, communicate with, and connect with my in-laws, as well as better appreciate and embrace the culture. Plus, my husband is learning a bunch and loving it too. Thank you so much. I, I so appreciate your words. This is the reason why we do what we're doing. This warms my heart. Thank you so much. Please leave a stellar review if it speaks to you. Let me know what your thoughts are, how it has uh, changed the way maybe you think about the Filipino culture. This is very much appreciated. Maraming salamat po. Are Filipinos truly bilingual? We use the same language at home, but speak and love languages foreign to each other, together but separated. Kamusta? I'm Rowan, licensed psychotherapist mom, immigrant twice, first generation Pinay raising my mixed Filipino American children in America. I found that after visiting 500 Filipino homes, I continue to be a student of the culture. In this podcast, we would be seatmates in this beautiful cultural classroom. And by the way, did I tell you I need my kaping barako straight from Batangas before each class? If you're interested in learning the deep intricacies of the Filipino culture, especially as it merged with American culture, talks about trauma-informed care and deepening your Filipino relationships across generations, which includes my fave topic, Pinoy Love Languages, you're in the right place. Kamusta, friends? Thank you for being here. This is Rowan, your host for the Pinoy Love Language podcast. I hope you're appreciating my voice. Excuse if I sneeze, please bless me. <laughs> if I do, that tells me I'm in the right group of friends. Now, let's talk about seeing beyond the mass. If you haven't listened to episode one, you must listen to episode one for this to make sense. Some of your depiction of the Filipino culture may come from your mom, your relationship with your mom, maybe a tita who uses culture as her fallback to give her kind of excuse, reasons for her behavior. And I understand it can easily leave a bad taste in your mouth. You feel like, oh, maybe I don't want to be part of this culture or this culture is toxic. And as mentioned, every culture has its shadow. I mentioned that in the previous episode, in the many episode in this podcast. When culture is used as, a, as an excuse, it would feel disingenuous, insincere, and almost like the person is in a trance, okay? That they communicate, this is just how I do it, and don't ask questions. There are many things that we do, rituals and ceremonies that are beautiful expressions in the culture. We do that because we're become used to doing it, but we don't do it just for nothing. The explanation may not always make sense cognitively, but offers support for expression of self or even spirituality. So even with that, there is a reason. It is also true that traditions are passed on and the descendants, you, may no longer be aware of their original intent, okay? The intent of your ancestor. In this case, the ancestor continues the ritual out of love and not out of fear. 
My friends, this is the difference. This is how you would get a sense if culture is used as a way to explain, to better understand each other, or if culture is used as an excuse. That's the difference. This continuing it out of love or out of fear. When your mom acts in service of fear, for instance, following rules and standards, for the fear of being punished, only doing good, quote-unquote, for the fear of being bad, okay? Being the best for the fear of being no one. That is in service of fear. What you need to do is look and attune with care on who's truly behind this culture mass. When you look at your mom, there's some face behind it. Perhaps it's trauma, again, unprocessed grief, a repressed sadness that need to be projected at all costs. We see this everywhere where we would protect our story, the story that we've subscribed to. And usually those stories are passed on until they become our own story. Story now we tell ourselves. And we would protect this story at all costs, even though it is an healthy for us because the body the brain clamors for something familiar it is better to know what's happening next than to have an adventure knowing that the the adventure will be the way to freedom so we become so used to this mask that we would protect it at all costs and when you think about mask you could simply see this also from a a micro lens there are wars happening around the world and there are groups of people and these groups groups of people are made up of individuals that are so set in the story that have been told to them and now they're telling them themselves And so looking at oneself can be deeply painful. And for some, a mask allows them to continue to live in the world. So when we talk about culture as a mask, you would know because it is out of fear. Now, my friends, if this is your mom, your tita, it is not your job to change their mask or to remove it, but only to know that a human heart lies beyond what you see, that is what would make a difference. To know that they have to build mask layers to protect something inside that is so fragile. With this environment, you two probably have learned to wear your own mask. And as I mentioned before, give yourself grace and promise me not to confuse your mask with your own face. Here's some final thoughts, my friends. When immigrants use culture either as an explanation or an excuse, it can be difficult to for Filipino Americans to discern which one is happening, which one are they doing. Your cultural knowledge insecurity can get in the way. You're thinking, oh, okay, I'm sure they that my immigrant parents know more about the culture than I do. It's easy to shrug your shoulders and give way to the thought that it's just probably the Filipino culture. You blame yourself for not knowing, not knowing enough about it. I encourage you, my friends, to learn more about the culture, not just from social media posts. I find them even from scholars, from Filipino American hub. I find that they misinterpret the culture. So find a reputable source. I have, if you're interested, I have a master class that really has helped many Filipino American professionals, therapists, and psychologists. It's a master class called Pakikiramdam Filipinos on Affection Beyond Words. Okay, it talks about deep Filipino nuances and which could help break the cycle of generational trauma caused by miscommunication but if it's caused by unprocessed trauma which we're talking about today 
please seek some support. You can learn more about Filipino culture. And here's the thing, you can learn as much about Filipino culture listening to this podcast, reading my article, taking classes. But you must also learn to trust yourself enough. It is no master class can teach you to do that. And even if you begin to understand the nuances of the culture, your distrust of yourself would likely lead you to trust the other person over you. I leave you with this message, my friends. Learn the culture, the nuances of the culture. But I want to emphasize that what you need to learn is to trust yourself. The standard given to you as far as like being Filipino enough is something that is made up, is an illusion based on your immigrant parents. There is no standard. You can recreate, uncreate, unlearn, relearn your culture, but you can also study it. So it, it seemed like I'm talking about two polar opposites. You can study it. You can learn it. You could, you know, learn from reputable sources. And they truly are nuances in the culture that when you learn it, you will be, it's almost like learning a new language. It's amazing uh, because I teach it a lot. I, I, I know the transformation that people get. But at the same time, my friends, there's another part. If you have unprocessed trauma, grief, sadness, learn to also tap into trusting your own intuition, your own voice. Trust yourself, my friends. Usually I tell my clients who are still in the process of trusting themselves, I tell them, I trust you. And for now, you can borrow my trust in you until you can begin to completely trust yourself. Maraming salamat po sa pakikinig. And I'll talk to you soon. Sa ulitin. Bye now.